Colorizing old black and white material using deep learning has definitely been a hot topic on the internet for the last couple of months. While there's plenty of software and cloud-based solutions that allow you to colorize still images, the solutions for film footage aren't that many. That's why today we're going to explore a new trick that will allow you to enhance and automatically colorize old black and white footage without any manual colorization whatsoever. For this experiment, I've gathered a few public domain movie clips from archive.org and I'm going to share with you guys the process as well as how the colorized clips look like, especially that the clips I chose contain a variety of subjects within the frame, ranging from humans, natural elements, vehicles, buildings, and it's going to be very interesting to see how the AI treats each one of those elements. This method relies essentially on two programs, Video Enhance AI, which we will use to enhance our black and white footage quality and Adobe Photoshop which we will use to colorize our video frames thanks to Adobe Sensei technology. On top of that you will need an editing software of your choice. Now I know what you're thinking why and how are we going to use Photoshop to colorize video footage. Well, if you're familiar with some of my previous tutorials about upscaling video footage, you probably know where I'm going with this. And if you aren't, then please bear with me here. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on videos around this topic and much more in the future. Let me start by choosing one of the shortlisted black and white videos. First of all, I'm gonna bring it over to Video Enhance AI. And I'm gonna do this in an attempt to add a bit of details, not only to improve the overall quality of the video, but I'm also hoping this will help the colorization AI do a better job at identifying the video elements and colorizing them more accurately. Once you bring your video in, you will notice that the software comes with a whole bunch of settings which you may wanna play around with, and this obviously is gonna depend on the input itself. Now I have tried multiple combinations in advance, and I already know that these settings work best for my video. So for the sake of keeping things quick, I'm not gonna go through each and every one of these settings, but luckily they all come with a short description as well as a comparison tool that's supposed to help you figure out the best use case scenarios. I have set the scaling to 200%. I do recommend that you enable grain for a more natural look and let's change the output format to PNG. This way each frame of our video will be exported in a separate PNG file and we will get to why we're doing this in just a minute. Before starting the process, you can click right here to have a quick preview of the upscaled footage just to make sure that everything looks good. As you can see, Video Enhance did a very good job at bringing back some details to our video footage without sacrificing the natural look. And once you're happy with the settings, go ahead and click on start processing. The process usually takes a couple of minutes and the software is actually getting faster and faster with each update. And by default, the frames will be exported in a new folder right next to your original clip. Now, although there are other video enhancement solutions you can use, I believe Video Enhance is one of the fastest and most efficient options out there as it has been greatly improved over the past year or so. I will leave a download link in the description below along with a promo code that you can use to get a 15% off if you plan to get the full version. Now that we're done enhancing the video and all frames have been exported, let's go ahead and open one of the upscaled PNG frames in Photoshop. First thing we need to do now is go over here to the window menu and open up actions, which we will use to automate the colorization process. Next, let's go over here and create a new droplet. You can rename it to anything you want. I'm just gonna call it a droplet. After that, go over here and create a new action. And I'm going to call this colorize frame and now click record. You will notice that this record icon has turned red, which now means that Photoshop is going to record every single action I do from now on. So with the layer selected, let's go over to filter and open neural filters. And then you need to find the colorize filter. If you don't see this here, you're probably using an old Photoshop version. So make sure you upgrade. In my case, I have used the colorize filter before. But if this is your first time, instead of this button, you will probably see a download icon like this one by default. Make sure you download the filter first and then simply click here to enable it. It will take a couple of seconds to automatically add colors to your image. And as you can see, 
it's not random at all. The AI is actually able to identify different elements present in the frame and colorize them with very high accuracy, which is truly impressive. Now, what's great is that you're also provided with extra adjustments here. So you do have a bit of control over the new look of your image. For example, you can add saturation, or perhaps you want to reduce noise for further enhancement. I will go ahead and add a bit of a cooler tint to my image because I'm not a big fan of the warm tone produced by the filter here. Once you're done and happy, you can go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, a new colorized layer has been created. And also the neural filter action which we just did has been recorded under the droplet. So now we're going to look at how to apply the same action on all of the remaining video frames. So let's go ahead and stop the recording, go over to File, Automate and create a droplet. First choose where to save the droplet file and this can be anywhere on your computer. I'm going to place it on my desktop and I will call it Colorize Droplet. Hit save. Next select the set which in my case is droplet and the action which I previously called colorized frame. You can leave this list as it is. Now it's essential to pick a destination where all the colorized images are going to be saved. I'm going to choose a folder which I've already created but you can pick any destination you want. There will be no difference. Make sure you enable override action save as commands. Set the first field to document name and the third field to extension and then hit OK. Now if you check your desktop, you will find that a new droplet has been created and this file pretty much has all the colorization actions embedded inside. And to apply those actions on all of my video frames, all I need to do is drag the folder which contains my video frames and drop it on top of this droplet. This will instantly fire up Photoshop and as you can see Photoshop is uh, now going through all the frames, applying the recorded actions on each one of them and saving the processed frames as new PSD files inside the destination which you selected. Now clearly one of the biggest downsides of this method is the amount of time that Photoshop takes to process all the frames. Now keep in mind this will highly depend on the video footage itself, its duration as well as your hardware specs. I'm running this on a not very powerful laptop and I will put my specs up for you guys so you can use it as a benchmark. All that's left to do now is to stitch all these PSD files into a single video. I'm going to use Adobe Premiere Pro for that, but you can pretty much use any editing software you can get your hands on. Let's go to import, select the very first PSD frame, make sure you enable image sequence and click open. Now drag the imported file over here to create a new sequence and you can also import the original clip as well. So you can restore the audio by dragging the audio track over here below the colorized clip and all that's left to do now is to export the sequence into a video file. Now despite the multiple steps I'm still so impressed by how the output looks like. Considering that I didn't have to do any manual colorization you can probably imagine how much time it would take for me to do this the classic way by colorizing each frame individually. I was most impressed by how Photoshop was assigning true colors to natural elements with very high accuracy. As you can see in these samples the sand on the beach was turned yellow and the sea was colorized in blue all automatically without any intervention from my side and the same goes for the trees in the background in this sample over here. I have to say though that this method often fails when the original video is very low in quality or contains flickering of some sort. Despite all that I'm really confident that having a dedicated video colorization tool in the near future that works with much greater accuracy is just a matter of time. And I think it's worth mentioning that there is a cloud-based solution called Deoldify which uses a very similar concept. The only issue here is that you need to upload your video online and you're limited to 15 minutes of footage. I have tried it with the same clip and I have to say it looks really impressive. Although I do like that with the Photoshop option you can add some color adjustments prior to the process. I'd say if you need to quickly colorize some short clips, the oldify is definitely worth trying. Let me know what you guys think about both methods. 
Would you rather go with Photoshop and have more control over the output or save some time and use the old Defy despite its limitations? In any case, I hope you've learned something new today. If you did, then don't forget to subscribe, give this video a blue thumb and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.